So it's official everybody, the EU did it. USB-C will be a legal requirement for all phones being shipped in the EU moving forward, starting as soon as 2024. Let's talk about what that means, especially for us here in the US who are still stuck with lightning enabled iPhones. Let's talk about it. So back in June of this year, there were reports that USB-C will be mandatory on all phones, not just iPhones, although iPhones are the only ones left that don't have USB-C, but it's going to be mandatory for all phones moving forward in 2024 in the EU. And for a little background on the law, firstly, it needed to be a 100% you know, unanimous pass, and lo and behold, it was a unanimous pass, which I'm so happy about because again, Everything that I personally use, even in the Apple ecosystem, right? You got M2 MacBook Air, M1 iPad Pro. I have other peripherals that use USB-C. And the only thing that uses Lightning is my iPhone and my AirPods, which is very, very annoying. Now, yes, I did kind of move totally over to wireless charging and to MagSafe charging, but it is still faster to physically plug in. And it's also a lot faster for data transfer on the iPhone side if we do have USB-C because Lightning cable, it just not that universal norm and that standard just isn't fast enough, especially now that we're dealing with 4K footage, 4K 60, 4K cinematic mode, you have the raw images and 48 megapixels. So moving those file sizes is just extremely slow via lightning. And the biggest reason why this law was brought forward, it wasn't really to kind of, you know, put our foot down towards Apple and say, hey, Apple, stop making money off of licensing lightning to different third-party applications and third-party accessories and things like that. It was more so to limit the e-waste when it comes to lightning, because again, if everything is USB-C capable and enabled, all we need is one charging brick and one cable to charge all of our devices versus having to have a charging brick that has at least two ports or carrying two charging bricks with a lightning and a USB-C cable. So at the end of the day, it is mostly for e-waste, but then it's also to standardize the USB-C because even from a USB-C standpoint, USB-C is still a little bit broken. You have some USB-C cables that only allow for like five watt charging. You have USB-C cables now that allow for 240 watt charging. So it's all in the name of universality and creating a new standard when it comes to USB-Cs moving forward. So now let's talk about what this means for USB-C on iPhones everywhere else but the EU, including the US. So this now means that by the iPhone 16 in the EU, all iPhone 16s being sold need to have USB-C ports for charging and data pass-through. Now again, this isn't a mandatory law that's gonna be coming globally, it's only for the EU. And there is a world that I personally see where Apple segregates iPhones from Lightning to USB-C the same way they just did it with eSIM. So keep that in the back of your mind because yes, the EU passing it is great news and a step forward for USB-C to come to iPhone, but Apple might be annoying and kind of make it so US-based iPhones still use Lightning and then everywhere else around the world it uses USB-C. Let's cross our fingers and I hope that doesn't happen because from a manufacturing standpoint, that just probably wouldn't be efficient on Apple side, but at the end of the day, it is Apple and you saw what they did with the eSIM. eSIM is now the standard in the US and we no longer have the ability to use physical SIM cards on the iPhone 14, but everywhere else around the world, including Canada and Mexico, which is attached to the US, you can still go across the border and buy a physical SIM enabled iPhone 14. So keep that in the back of your mind when moving forward. But another silver lining is that Apple is actually planning to go with USB-C on the iPhone 15 anyway, which would be next year in 2023. And just to give you a little history on USB-C in the Mac ecosystem, it first came to that 12 inch MacBook that was released in 2015 with one single USB-C port and then the headphone jack on the other side. It was definitely ahead of its time, but Apple, that's the first time they adopted USB-C on any other devices. And little by little, they started to trickle USB-C throughout their Mac lineup, their MacBook lineup. Then they brought it to the 2018 iPad Pro, and they're slowly trickling that down to the iPad Air, the iPad Mini, and hopefully the iPad 10th generation will be getting USB-C. But again, that is the iPad lineup. So now the last domino to fall is gonna be the iPhones and then all of its auxiliary accessories like AirPods, like the trackpad, like the Magic Keyboard, all those things still use Lightning to charge, which ideally will be transitioned over to USB-C as well. And then bringing USB-C over to iPhones is gonna be a game changer for a lot of creatives as well, or just people that take a lot of images and wanna organize their images on an external hard drive or something like that. Because with the new standard of USB-C 4 or USB 4, depending on which way you're reading it, we're not gonna be able to do up to 800 gigabytes per second of transfer speeds, which compared to lightning transfer speeds and airdrop transfer speeds are night and day. So imagine getting all those raw images from that 48 megapixel camera and offloading it onto a hard drive in mere seconds versus now it takes a little while to airdrop all that footage, all those photos. It just takes too long right now with, with airdrop and lightning. 
And the last little tidbit about this law, which I'll read right now, is that the EU law actually extends not just to smartphones like I mentioned, but a whole range of other devices. So, so regardless of the manufacturer, all new mobile phones, tablets, you know, like iPads and iPad 10 generation, digital cameras, headphones, headsets, handheld video games, like the Switch, but if, you know, let's say PlayStation wanted to make another PSP or PS Vita, they gotta go USB-C, but it also includes mice, keyboards, portable navigation systems, pretty much anything that holds a charge that needs to be charged will need a USB-C port in order to be sold in the EU, which I think is gonna be an amazing thing and universality when it comes to these charging situations and these charging standards is going to be key moving forward to limit e-waste especially, but then also to make sure our devices don't break and our devices aren't being charged too fast or too slow. And then lastly, this law will also be moved over to all laptops in 2026. So that is gonna be the last domino to fall. On the Mac side, on the Apple side, it's fine because we already use USB-C as a standard to charge laptops, but they're probably eyeing other computer manufacturers that use proprietary charging ports, you know, that have a charging brick. The first ones that come to mind are like Lenovo ThinkPads, which they have their own proprietary charger. But again, by 2026, all laptops will also be USB-C. But that is gonna do for this video, everybody. Hopefully this is good news to you as well. And hopefully people that bought the iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max aren't disappointed that by the iPhone 15, ideally Apple will bring USB-C, but I'm sure Apple will work something out where it's gonna be easier to transition from a 14 to a 15 to get that USB-C capability. But let's see what Apple does moving forward. For now, let's just enjoy our new iPhone 14s and know and have peace of mind that in the future, now there is a actual deadline for Apple to move to USB-C, which is a great thing to have. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys didn't make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And leave some comments down below what you think about this law. Do you think this is a good thing? Do you think this is a bad thing? Is it good that lawmakers are getting involved with private companies to make them standardize certain things? Again, we live in a capitalistic society, especially here in the US. So some people are a little bit against that. Some people are for that. I'm all for it for right now, especially for USB-C, because in my opinion, it just makes everything a lot better for the consumer and for competition overall. But that's gonna do it. I'm Fernando. If you guys wanna watch some more videos on iOS, iPadOS, macOS, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm out of here.